So I'm Dave Meyer. I know most of you, I think. Um, I, I was asked to talk about um, what was going on with open daylight and hydrogen and what's next and all of that kind of stuff. I'm, you know, I'm kind of fortunate because I get to work across a lot of things. Um, I, I work in the theory community. I work in the uh, open source community. I'm a developer in the open source community. I work in the standards and I've been a long time IETF, as you guys know, participant. And I get to work for this great company. So it's all kind of cool. So hopefully I'll, I'll tell you something of interest here. So this is about um, what I learned. This is really about what I learned uh, from being inside a, a large open source project for a year or so now and how and what, what we learned from the hydrogen release, which was the first release of Open Daylight, and what's kind of coming up next. So, um, by the way, this hydrogen, this is helium. We tried to, we tried to um, you know, kind of have the TSC, I'm the chair of the TSC of the uh, Technical Steering Committee of Open Daylight, and we tried to control the naming of the next release, but, you know, somehow helium just seemed like the right thing, and, and it just caught on. It had its own life. Oh, oh well, I'll show you guys in a second. Okay, this is what I wanted to talk about, but not, you know, no. <laughs> but actually, actually, uh, oh, this didn't work. Okay, this, this was supposed to work differently. But okay, so really what, what's really happening here is there's an interesting theory thing going on here because what SDN really means is it means that it, it means the transformation from passive to active control. And once you have that, um, it's, it's control theory world. And understanding things like this curve right here, um, which is sort of like the trade-off curve, all these things are about trade-offs and fundamental trade-offs. And the Bode sensitivity integral is something that ta talks about the limits of what feedback control can do. And we need to build that kind of thinking into our code if we want to build code that really works. But that's for another day. So, um, book on that. <coughs> what's that? I'm reading a really good book on control system feedback in uh, computing, computer science. Anytime you want to talk about it. Yep. Um, uh, one of my colleagues in this is a, a guy named John Doyle at Caltech, the ultimate wizard of control theory. Um, okay, so learnings from a year inside, you know, a little bit about what is hydrogen, uh, a, a few metrics, and then what's queued up for helium. Oops. Wow. Okay. So here's, here's my key learnings. Okay, so the first thing is, Community building is a core objective of any open source, um, of any open source project core objective. In fact, this, the collaboration that goes on inside these projects is going to transform networking more than anything else. This is so powerful. It, it, you know, it transcends all the technologies. So community building. And the Open Daylight community is, if you guys went to the Open Daylight Summit, it was like a love fest. It was incredible. Um, Code is the coin of the realm. I said that, okay? So I said that because I, I was inside the, have you guys seen that challenge coin? Anybody seen it? Want to see it? You got, you got one of the, here, pass around. You get one of these if, you're, uh, con, if you committed code to hydrogen. So only a few of those were made <coughs> and the only, only the developers who committed code. So I had said, wow, code is the coin of the realm and that's the coin of the realm right there. <laughs> um, and then engineering systems are as important as the artifacts. So here's Madhu on the OS, uh, OVSDB weekly call in their Google Hangout, just, uh, you know, the entire engineering system environment that they use. Like, you know, if you don't develop your code this way, in a, like in Brocade or somewhere else, you're going to get run over. Um, th this is, a, all this stuff is so powerful. And it transcends, it works, it transcends any particular technology. So if you put all those three things together, um, what you kind of get is this. Um, and this is something that, you know, vendors that I've worked at don't really like. Oh, this didn't work either, but the, the top thing is what you want to look at. It turns out that the artifacts that you build are not going to be as important as the way you build them in the future. And these are the things that are going to be, uh, in, you know, giving you competitive advantage, both in terms of sustainability and innovation. And if you talk to people at Google, Facebook, Microsoft, Telefonica, any of those places, they're already there. And in fact, if you look at Red Hat, this is their business model. They're already there. So that's, I mean, I didn't know this. I learned that. And then this is, a, I don't know if you guys know this, this is the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, one of the best bridges ever built. It actually has feedback control thing. It's an area of static flutter. Positive <laughs> feedback blew up. All right. So what is hydrogen? I, I think I only have 10 minutes, so I've got to burn through this. So. Here's a level set. Everybody's seen this picture, right? Do I need to spend any time on this? 
It's a three-layer controller SDN picture. The thing that's uh, unique about um, the Open Daylight controllers, it's, it, it's designed to be multi-protocol multi southbound and northbound and very dynamic in terms of, and model-driven. So this is a, there's a lot of complexity in here. MD Sal is what we call it, model-driven Sal. It's an ambitious piece of software engineering. It's buggy, like all other software, but it'll get better over time. So we have the simultaneous release plan. This is what it was, but um, you know, it didn't happen the way we thought it was going to happen. In fact, it was really uh, kind of we kind of got within two months of that, <laughs> and that, that had to do with the fact that um, building the OpenFlow <coughs> 1.3 3 plugin was more was harder than we thought it was going to be. Okay, let's see if this is going to work. What we actually got was 14 <coughs> projects, include well the controllers one, and then there were 13 other projects. I'll, I'll talk about what those were. Um, there was pretty good diversity across the products, projects. One of the metrics you might want to take for an open source project is the diversity of committers on any project. The controller wasn't that good. That was kind of ugly, you know, and we need to work on that. Um, we had the simultaneous release. All these things got released at the same time. We had artifacts cut at all of that. Um, the release date went from the, uh, from the 9th of December to the, you know, around February 3rd, which was the day before the summit, conveniently. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, we, there, there are all kinds of issues about this that we learned about. And one of the things I learned was, I'll, I'll tell you more about this in a second, but one of the things I learned was we need more code that writes code. Less, less humans, more code that writes code. More, more automation, always more better. So there's kind of an impressive list of stuff in there, right? I mean, there was the controller, there was... Uh, VTN is uh, virtual tenant networking from uh, NEC, OpenDove from IBM, um, the affinity management service from the Plexi folks. Um, by the way, uh, the truth in advertising, these three things, it's breaking. we don't have an abstraction layer in, in the controller that lets these things live together. You have to choose one. Now, there is a new project that, that's proposing an abstraction layer, but it's not there now. And then some of this stuff is infrastructure, like Yang tools. The thing is so heavily based on uh, Yang models that it Yang Tools itself is a project. So all this stuff got delivered. Let's see, what, what kind of metrics do we have? So Anise, Anise made these slides. These aren't mine. Um, and they were actually made in uh, Keynote, so they didn't kind of transfer too well. But basically, we started off you know, with a couple of projects, and it ramped up really quickly. And we had 16 the end, by the end of it. Yeah, there's seven new ones. I'll tell you what those are in a second. Um, this is interesting. Um, one of the things that we... So, so the controller is written in Java, and the whole thing is really based on OSGI um, technology. And that's, that's convenient and nice, but we want it to be... We want to have more language bindings. And it's interesting that there's so much C++ code in, the, in, in this thing. And you know what these are is they're like... So what people had, d had done is they built a, you know, some kind of proxy for some service they wanted in C++, and then they built a southbound from the controller to talk to that proxy. So that's why, that's why, the, that's why this. There's no, there's no uh, native language binding um, other than Java in, in the controller itself. This is interesting, too. Um, so, oh, well, sorry about that. Again, this was Anise's slide. It didn't transfer that well. Um, the interesting thing here is Open Daylight's kind of one year old, r roughly, and it's got 1.5 million lines of code in it. And if you look at something like OpenStack, we, we, try to, we try to say, well, that many lines of code is good. You know, you kind of wonder about that. Is that good? And by the way, um, because of the MD cell, the MD cell actually writes code itself to um, link the north and southbound APIs. So that's really roughly four times that much, but a lot of it's auto-generated. This is all code that people had, you know, pounded out. Let's see here. The membership thing kind of tracked the projects too, right? So it kind of went like this, right? And you can, I don't know if this is going to work or not, because uh, I mean, first I went Keynote to PowerPoint, then Mac to Windows to Mac OS. Well, standards are important. You need more slides that write more slides. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, so anyway, this is, you know, this is kind of the, the trajectory. I mean, it's up and to the right, you know? I mean, more people joining all the time. Is that good? I think so. Um, 
so we, you know, we have, oh yeah, and the new, some of the newest ones are Context Stream and, uh, and, and these other folks. Context Stream guys were one of the first ones who did this Lisp uh, NFE thing, right? Well, so it's basically, they use Lisp, Lisp as an encapsulation to do traffic steering, basically. Oops. Okay, what's, what's gonna be in Helium? I think I'm already out of time. Um, so this application plugin, pol uh, policy plugin is something from Dvorkin and uh, Kyle in their new company over at Cisco. Um, that has already been accepted in the incubation. So that's, that, that project is incubating. These others that are listed, uh, DPDK, vSwitch, that's Intel, we're gonna uh, have the creation review for that today if, if they're ready, we think they are. And then these other ones are ones that have just been proposed. Um, this, this one's interesting because this is a, a, how to do language, other language bindings like I was mentioning earlier. So, to wrap up here, um, here's some things we wanna work on. And these are, these are my ideas mostly. Um, again, continue to build the community. This is so fundamental to this. I mean, you know, it's almost more important. When you put it together, what's important, what's really important is community. Community and collaboration is gonna change the way networking works, fundamentally. And you, you see it happening now. Um, again, I mentioned this committer diversity thing. That's part of community and collaboration. We gotta get that going a little bit better, but that's a maturity thing as well. Um, Code quality and coverage, um, code has to get better. I mean, I don't, you know, have no illusions about this. If you have a million lines of code, it's gonna have a lot of bugs in it. It just is. Humans aren't that good at writing code. Again, we need machines to write code for us. I mean, the guys who write code probably don't think so quite as much. <laughs> <laughs> more, more, you know, more code written by code, basically. Um, there's this distributed system thing. This is a thing across all of the SDN controllers, right? How do you build a resilient controller? Obviously, to build a resilient controller, you need it to be a distributed system. You need that for resilience and scale. How do you do that? Right now, the, um, the controller has this InfiniSpan stuff, which has a strong consistency model, which is not really appropriate for networking. We like eventual consistency for various reasons. So. Um, Colin Dixon from IBM is really all over this, and w there's a project that had been proposed to kind of look at this. Staffing, um, this is interesting. It's an open source project. Who actually works there, right? I don't, I mean, I don't work for Linux Foundation or for Open Daylight. So we need to have a release engineer, right? One of the things that really was tough was when we were cutting artifacts, it took all day. And, and this was because there were version SKUs and all of these different things, it was really tough. So we need release engineering. And uh, by the way, OpenStack has this. They have actual release engineering resources on their staff. We need documentation specialists. This is, this is really hard. Um, one of the really cool things is OpenStack has code that writes documentation from their code, which is really good, but you also need some humans. Uh, our engineering systems need refinement. Okay, so now here's a, here's the thing. Remember I said that um, the, the actual engineering systems that you use are as important as the artifacts you make? you build with those systems? Well, if you look at something like OpenStack, I, I look at OpenStack a lot because it's more mature in terms of time and space than, than Open Daylight. And if you look at it, their tool chains are actually checked in as projects. For example, they have Jenkins, Garrett, and all that stuff as projects in OpenStack. Why? Because the, they build their own tools as they're building their artifacts. By the way, that, if you think about that, that causes massive acceleration in how fast you can write code. Right, so it's, there's a recursive thing going on here. Oh yeah, so we need more code that writes code and we need fewer humans, you know. I mean, we need fewer humans in the loop everywhere. More automation, more better. Of course, you don't want to boot Skynet. Let me, let me, be, <laughs> you know, let me be clear about that. That could, that could be not so good. I think I'm way out over. Okay, of course, there's other things. I mean, this list could go on forever because, you know, it's kind of a big project. But, you know, sustaining engineering, you have a hard time doing sustaining. When I was at Cisco, nobody wanted to fix bugs, right? So you're a developer, you want to build features, you don't want to fix bugs. Mm -hmm. Sustaining engineering is hard. We don't know how to do it in open source exactly yet. Well, the way the model works is, you know, when you're a new person, you come and you fix bugs before you build features. But then if you're a new person, you don't understand why there's a, you know, it has that. And, and also, the, as the complexity of the system grows, it's harder and harder to do that. So sustaining engineering is something that needs to get solved. 
Um, performance and scalability, that's always going to be there. That bullet will always be there. And code quality, always be there. Because code's really crummy, right? I mean, have you guys seen what software looks like? It's terrible. You know, it, it's really terrible. Um, uh, again, people aren't that good at it. Uh, and then new projects, you know, I, during, at the, uh, mm. at the uh, Open Daylight Summit, there were so many projects that were being discussed in the halls about things that people wanted to do. It was really amazing. So one of our problems, I think, for the upcoming year and the next release, we're going to try to get on a six-month cadence like OpenStack is, because that's about the right thing. And, you know, the problem is going to be trying to control the number of projects that we have, because I think there's going to be just a huge explosion of things that people want to do. Where do you see those suggestions coming from, mostly like the vendor space or? Everywhere. I'm, I'm Everywhere. In fact, you know what? I just got an email this morning from these guys at EPC in, uh, I guess, in Spain. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they have this whole AI um, project that they want to do on top of Open Daylight, which is really interesting. It's very kind of exploratory kind of thing, and they want to use. So it's, they're coming from everywhere. 